Somebody ought to give God praise in this place. Think about every mountain, every valley, every obstacle that God has brought you over. And forget about who's around you. Give God a personal praise from the depths of your own soul. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. I invite you to stand all over this building and reach out and grab that neighbor by the hand. And when you touch that hand, tell them, I'm glad I sat by you. Hold that hand. Sounds like God's been good to somebody in here. Mm. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. God, really, before we ask for anything, we have to tell you thank you for everything. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every open door. Thank you for some shut doors. Thank you for how you have kept us through it all. And now, God, in this sacred still moment that we ready ourselves and prepare ourselves to hear from you, have your way in this place. We've heard from the news reporters. We've heard from social media. But now, God, we want to hear from you. So interrupt whatever's going on in our minds and our spirits and our worlds and have your way. Allow us to hear fresh from heaven. And we seal this prayer knowing that it's already done in the name of the one who's still able to turn water into wine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all of God's people shout, it is so. And amen. Amen. Put those blessed hands together and praise God one more time. Grab your Bibles while you're standing. Grab your Bibles while you're standing. Some of you all, it is so good to see you. Some of you, this is your first service. This is my fourth service for the weekend. Amen. I'm going to need your prayers to get through this one. Amen. But I have, I have enjoyed my weekend hanging out with the Alfred Street Baptist Church. It has been a blessed magical type of weekend. The worship has been awesome. Some churches we come to pour out, but some churches they pour into you while you're there. And this church, this ministry, y'all have been pouring into my spirit all weekend. And I thank God for that. Help me thank God for the one and only Dr. Howard John Wesley. Come on. We thank God for Dr. Wesley. And we're praying for his safe return and all of those who are over in the Holy Land. I will only preach for about two and a half hours, amen? And then I'll be through around two-ish, amen. My wife is here. Y'all say, hey, Miss Bree, wave your hand, wave your hand. Amen. She's hanging out with me, and we're looking forward to finding something good to eat after church. Somebody say, I know that's right. To all of the leaders, to all the preachers that have been so warm and hospitable, thank you all. I want to invite your attention to the 37th Psalm. The 37th Psalm, verse 23. The 37th Psalm, verse 23. I see friends throughout the sanctuary, and it's so good to see you all here. Thank you for being here. The 37th Psalm, verse 23, out of the King James Version, reads like this. The steps of a good person, a good man, a good woman, the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. The steps of a good person, good woman, a good man are ordered by the Lord. I want to talk today from this talk very simply. Are you good? I hope you like who you sit by because if you don't like them, that's your fault because you sure did sit down beside them. So smile at them and with a real genuine, sincere smile and say, neighbor, neighbor. can I ask you a question? Are you good or no? Are you good? Are you good? Are you good? Brothers and sisters, on June 17th, 2015, three years ago, an injudicious, deranged white supremacist walked into the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church there in Charleston, South Carolina, and killed nine African Americans. All of this happened during Bible study. Nine lives were taken by an injudicious, deeply deranged man, and one of the nine who were killed on that fateful day happened to be the pastor of the church. His name was the Reverend Clemente Pickney. 
He was not only a pastor, he was a husband. He was not only a husband, he was a father. He was not only a father, he was a United States Senator for the state of South Carolina. His death, along with the deaths of the other innocent lives lost, would rock the core of this nation. So much so that President Barack Hussein Obama agreed to deliver the eulogy for the Reverend Clemente Pickney. President Obama's eulogy is arguably one of the most remarkable and memorable eulogies ever delivered on U.S. soil. It was in this eulogy President Obama, speaking about Reverend Clemente Pickney, said these words, and I quote, What a good man. Sometimes I think that's the best thing to hope for when you're eulogized. After all the words and recitations and resumes are read, to just say someone was a good man. You don't have to be of high station to be a good man, end quote. The only bad thing about Obama's remarks were that Reverend Clemente's eyes had already been shut by the unbridled winds of eternity. His ears were stopped up by death's cold silence. He didn't hear anything President Obama said about him. But that's one reason I rejoice this morning. I rejoice this afternoon because there are countless good women and men sitting all around this sanctuary. And we have an opportunity this morning to tell you thank you for being a good person. Oh yes, thank you for being a good person because the truth is in this culture, in this society, it's hard to find good people these days. C.S. Lewis, that great author and theologian from the 20th century said, education without values, as useful as it is, just makes people nothing more than a clever devil. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. argues intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of education. Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, past president of Morehouse College and esteemed mentor to Dr. King, wrote a book entitled Disturbed About Man. And Dr. Mays says, I am disturbed, I am uneasy about man because we have no guarantee that when we train a man's mind, we will train him his heart. No guarantee when we increase a man's knowledge that we also increase his goodness. There is no necessary correlation between knowledge and goodness. C.S. Lewis says that a man or woman that has an education and has no values is nothing more than a clever devil. Are you listening president? Dr. King says if all you have is intelligence but have no character you have not really received a true education. Dr. May says just because a woman's head is smart does not mean her heart is sweet. Just because a man's head is smart doesn't mean that his heart is sincere. Dr. Lewis says that you can have an education with no values. You're nothing more than a clever devil. Dr. King says that if you have intelligence, no character, you've not received a true education. Dr. May says that just because we got to your head does not mean necessarily we got to your heart which basically backs up what our ancestors used to say that there is such a thing called an educated fool because you can have all of your wits and all of your smarts but that does not make you a good person deep down on the inside I'm so glad I've made it all the way from the ATL just to get here to ask you one question are you good just go on and look at somebody beside you and ask are you good see that's that's a colloquialism. That's a colloquialism. When you see somebody you haven't seen in a long time, you come up to them and you say, are you good? And if you're really young, you say, are you good or no? But today when I ask, are you good? What I'm asking is not about your existence. I'm asking about your essence. Are you good holistically? Are you good ethically? Are you good morally? Are you good in the center of who you are? Because I must warn you for those who are still on this boat that you can be a smart person but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be a clever person but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be an articulate person but that doesn't make you a good person.
person. You can be a rich person, but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be a popular person, but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be a well-connected person, but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be a scholarly person, but that doesn't make you a good person. You can be a fine person with sick packs and triceps and biceps but that doesn't make you a good person I thought some of the ladies would holler right there you can be a muscular person but that doesn't make you a good person you can be smooth and charismatic but that doesn't make you a good person you can be well known but that doesn't make you a good person you could have pledged aka Delta Sigma Gamma Rho Omega Alpha Kappa and there is an alpha standing in the Kappa's pulpit you can pledge all of what you want to pledge but that doesn't make you a good person you see when you are a good person you have a heart of love and a life of service when you are a good person you strive for perfection but you settle for excellence when you are a good person you consider other people's feelings and not just your own when you are a good person your values hold you together even when your vices threaten to tear you apart when you are a good person you work hard not to be a bad person when you are a good person the fruit of the spirit shows up in your life when you are a good person you don't sell your soul for a check because what profit a man or woman if he or she gains the whole world and loses their soul their psyche their mind in Greek when you are a good person others feel special and loved in your presence when you are a good person the light of God rests and radiates off of your life when you are a good person younger people and older people find a role model when they look at you when you are a good person compassion for others becomes the hallmark of your personality when you are a good person others become better because they've been hanging around in your presence when you are a good person you work to be a better version of the person that you were yesterday when you are a good I'm gonna preach whether y'all help me or not you when you are a good person it doesn't mean you're perfect it just means you keep making progress when you are a good person when you hear somebody else making a mistake you don't judge them but you hold them up in prayer and love because it was them today but it could very well be you tomorrow when you are a good person you don't mind apologizing to your spouse or your children or your subordinates because being at peace is better than being right when you are a good person you can lose your job struggle face pain go through a bad breakup fail try again fail try again fail try again fail try again, fail, try Try again, fail, try again, fail, try again, and never lose any of your self-worth because God's power is made perfect in your weakness. When you are a good person, you use things and you love people instead of using people and loving things. When you are a good person, money is a tool for you and not a God for you. When you are a good person, you you can have a drink as long as the drink don't have you when you are a good person you don't need a like on Facebook or Instagram you don't need to be invited to anybody's party or shindig as long as God double taps your life nothing else matters in the whole world the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord isn't that some good news today that the writer of this little text, this psalm, Psalm 37, this is a sage, some scholars say. Some say it's David, some say it wasn't David, but whoever it is, this is somebody whose brow is wrinkled by time. Their hands are callous from the work of the over the years. They have been through something. They've seen a little some something. They've gone through some challenges and they've dealt with some tests. And 
even the upside of the mountain. This is no neophyte talking today. This is somebody who's been through something. And can I just put a plug right here and let you know I'm 27, but I don't like hanging around folk in my age group all the time. Sometimes I want to hang around somebody who's been where I'm trying to go, whose hair is already gray. Matter of fact, I don't even like just preaching to young people. I like to go to a church where it's a mixed multi-generation because when the oldest mature seasoned saints get to church, they don't need a choir to make them happy. They don't need a preacher to pump them up. They don't need musicians. All they need is a memory of all the stuff God has already done for them. That's what, is there anybody around here been through something and without me asking you to praise God you can just look back over the channels and chapters of your life and say he's already done more than enough for me I can look at my own life I like hanging around somebody that has a testimony and that's what's happening in this text. This sage, this seasoned saint is writing about what it means to be a good person. And I hit them up last night and they sent me back a little text message. And they want me to share with you this text message about what it means when you make sure your life lines up in the will, the way, and the word of God. You want to make sure that you're good. Because when you're good, there's some gifts that are going to come with your goodness. The first gift that comes when you're trying to live your life right, when you're trying to do it the right way, the first gift is this, there's grace for every step. I said there's grace for every step. It's right there. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. Now to appreciate what the text says, you got to appreciate what it doesn't say. The text does not say that the steps of a good person are pre-ordered. Because that would suggest John Calvin's notion of predestination. That we don't get to choose any of our lives, but rather our lives have already been predetermined for us. But the truth is, I believe in something, and there's some other scholars who believe in something called free will. Where you have a choice in life. And the Bible backs this up. Because over in the book of Revelation, God tells the saints, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man or woman hears my voice, I will open it, come in, and sup with them. But God is not going to knock the door down. Jesus tells his disciples, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, I have the rest and the pause, the anapao that you need, but I can't give you what you need unless you come. Verse 4 of, 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 of Psalm 37 says something like this. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart, which means you have free will. That word delight in Hebrew means to lean. So when you're leaning on God, God can trust you with your choices. So the minute now that I choose my own step, it does not mean that God is directing me everywhere I step. But that word ordered in Hebrew literally means to establish. To make firm, to make settled. So no matter which way I step, God makes sure that God grabs every step and keeps me stable and established and firmed even when I make the wrong step even when I take a back step even when I do the two step no matter which step I take God is so loving and so gracious that there's a grace for every step now I don't know about you all but there are about a hundred of y'all in the room who ought to be joining me in praising God that God has kept every one of your steps safe. He made every one of your steps secure. He made every one of your steps established. Is there anybody here who understands I've not always stepped where I should have stepped but God's grace met me in every one of my steps. There's grace for every step. But then if you keep on reading, go down to verse 24, there's a grip for every stumble. Because the text says, if you keep reading, though he or she fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him or her with his right hand. 
Now that's good out the King James Version, but I requested that they put up the Message Bible because sometimes the Message Bible just makes it a little bit more palatable. It says stalwart, which means strong person, walks in step with God, his or her path, blazed by God. He's happy. But here it is. If he stumbles, he's not down for long. God has a grip on his hand. Church folk don't know when to shout. Dr. Miles Jones said we shout over trash and get silent on truth. If you stumble, you won't be down for long because God has a grip on your hand. I don't know about y'all, but there's somebody around the house who can testify your knees would have been skinned up a long time ago. But the only reason you're still intact, the only reason you still have your stability, still have your equilibrium, still have your joy is because God's grip was tight on your life. The other day, a few months ago, we were hanging out at Hampton Ministers Conference down in Hampton, Virginia. And, and you know, those sessions can get real lengthy sometimes. Preachers know what I'm talking about. Preachers just preach long, they sing long, they talk long, they lecture long. Everything gets long. And then you got to stand around for the preacher to talk. Hey, doc, what's going on? Well, my stomach was eating my back and I was hungry. I was ready to go. I, I, I didn't have any more energy for any more lectures. I couldn't do the preacher talk and the preacher rhetoric. So I was headed full speed ahead to the car because there was some seafood somewhere in the city with my name written all over every shrimp and scallop. So my wife was caught up in the preacher rhetoric. They're talking but she caught a glimpse that her husband was way up ahead already moving with momentum and deep stride towards the car and so she tried to catch up behind me and, and I was looking straight ahead because you know if you just keep acting like you don't see nothing people leave you alone and so I'm just looking straight ahead walking but I heard her little pitter patter footsteps behind me and all of a sudden I heard toot toot toot. I said I think she just tripped but I can't laugh yet I gotta make sure she's okay so I turn around I said Brie are you alright she's laughing at herself I said what happened she said I tripped she said I think I tripped over myself if you keep it 100 sometimes we've fallen and tripped but it wasn't the devil's fault you can't blame anybody else about it if you be real, sometimes you were just like my wife. You tripped over yourself. But isn't it the good news about God that God loves us enough that his grip is on us so tight that even when we get ready to trip, his hand will come down from glory. And hope. Can somebody just thank God for his hand? If I was down in Georgia, they sing a little song about hold to his hands. God's unchanging hands. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. But when I can't grab God's hands, I'm glad he he never lets go of my hands. I'm glad that God's hands are still on me now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. I double dog dare you to praise God if you know he's been keeping you on your feet. I said give God some praise if you know God's grip has held you through the grief held you through the divorce held you through the unfavorable season and if it had not been for God's hands you would have lost your mind there's grace for every step but there's a grip for every stumble but then there's goodness in every season because if you come out of verse 24 and go down to verse 25 it's going to say something that's going to make your soul leap with joy this sage or David says something like this, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've seen a lot. I've seen presidents come and go. I've seen leaders come and go. I've seen evil men and good. I've seen a lot, but there's one thing I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread because God loves us enough that in every season of your life, he'll give you goodness. He'll keep you looking good in your 20s, but some of y'all are in your 60s and 70s and you look like you're in your 20s. 
is because he'll give you some goodness in every seat. Here you are in your 80s still walking like you 40. You still fine, still foxy, wearing six inch heels with your bad self. It's because he'll give you goodness in every season. You don't believe it? You don't believe it? If you're under the age of 30 and God's been good to you, give God some praise. If you're under the age of 30, amen. 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 Did you hear that? Just, But that's because we've just been through a little bit of storm, a little bit of lies, a little bit of betrayals, a little bit of deception, a little bit of issues, a little bit, a little bit. Amen. Wasn't that cute? But if you're over the age of 30, you 40 or 50, 50 or 60, 60 or 70, 70 or 80, and I ask you to give God praise, it's a whole nother sound. Because the longer you've been living, you can look back over your life and testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Is there anybody who can join in with Andre Crouch and say, I thank God for my mountains and I thank God for my valleys. I thank the Lord for every storm that he's already brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I would not know what faith in his word could do. So now the older you get, you're going to be able to say through it all, I've learned how to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned how to trust in God. Can anybody lift your hands and testify? I've learned how to depend upon God's word. All I'm trying to tell you is the steps of a good man and the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. I know another man whose steps were ordered. His name is not Reverend Clemente Pickney. His name is not Martin Luther King Jr. His name is not Dr. Benjamin Elijah May. But I know another man whose steps were ordered. He stepped out of eternity down into time, stepped out of royalty down into poverty, stepped out of the shining courts, the shining courts of glory into the womb of a woman, stepped into Bethlehem, stepped into Nazareth, stepped into a temple, and started teaching the scholars. Stepped into Cana and turned a bottle of Dasani into a bottle of Pinot Grigio. He turned water into wine. Stepped on top of the water and kept Peter from drowning. Stepped in Bethany and got Lazarus out the tomb. Stepped in another city. Took two pieces of tilapia and five red lobster biscuits and fed 5,000. And one Friday, he stepped up a hill, a hill called Calvary. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head and hell got happy. The demons were rejoicing. The earth started rocking. The sun got shy and moved behind the black cows of a midday sky. The centurion soldier cried, we've made a mistake because surely this must be the son of God they took him off the cross I'm at a Baptist church ain't I they took him off the cross put him in a new tomb thought it was over he stayed there all Friday and they thought it was over he stayed there all Saturday and they thought it was over stayed there all Saturday night they thought it was over but bright early Sunday morning he stepped out the grave 
stood flat footed on resurrection ground and said all power is in my hands shake somebody's hand and tell them the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds the future my life is worth the living just because he lives is there anybody here glad Jesus ain't through he can still step in your house he can still step in your heart he can still step in your family he can still step in at the hospital he can still step in on your job he can still step in on your problems I'm going to my seat but my soul done got happy I'm trying to sit down but I'm reminded of an old story about a little girl who was running around the house after church one Sunday she was running around the house opening up all the closets opening up all the cabinets she asked her big brother have you seen Andy the brother said no who in the world is Andy she ran downstairs went in the kitchen said mama have you seen Andy the mama said no but who in the world is Andy she ran back upstairs and found her daddy and said daddy have you seen Andy and the daddy said I ain't seen no Andy and it better not be no Andy in this house without me knowing about it and soon the whole family gathered they gathered together on the steps and they calmed the girl down they said who in the world is Andy the little girl said while well, we were at church the old deacon started singing Andy walks with me Andy talks with me Andy tells me that I am his own I'm looking for Andy her daddy said that ain't no Andy that's Jesus and he walks with me and he blesses my soul and he pays my bills and he picks me up and he turns me around shake your neighbor's hand say Andy got you somebody rejoice somebody turn up on a Sunday because every step is blessed by the Lord say yes say yes Say yeah! Touch three people say Andy got you. Andy got you. Andy got you. Wherever you step this week, I speak over your life. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm headed to my seat, but I feel that song in my spirit. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. There's a lot going on in the world, but lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing. Somebody need it, just lift your hands. Father, I pray, ask God, order my steps in your word please 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 come on let's sing it one time and I'm going on to my seat order my steps Lord Oh, my God. 
is coming back Reverend Mark is coming back to officially open the doors of the church but I don't want you to miss the message Thank you, Lord. celebration is good Thank you, Lord. but you need Jesus yes. to help you order your steps Hallelujah. he'll make them firm old church said like this on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground sinking sand if you're here you need to accept christ maybe you're looking for a church home and you've been visiting 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 i don't know why i just feel god saying to somebody your visiting days are over stop peeking in the window come on in the house alfred street is one of the greatest churches on this side of heaven a great church where the pastor is going to teach the word of god the people love god and they're going to love on you if you need to accept christ squeeze that hand one time if you need to join a ministry where you can be covered and learn how to walk the way God wants you to walk. Squeeze that neighbor's hand. If anybody squeezes your hand when the preacher comes back up, be so kind to lead them down front so their life will never look the same again. Would you do that for me? Would you do that for me? In Jesus' name, amen.